Broadcasting from the far side of Enceladus, beaming in at the speed of light across the vast chasms of space, streaming directly into your brain. You're listening to the Spartacast League, and tonight is just Attican, myself, Phelan. But we have a hell of a show tonight as we go deeper down the rabbit hole than Nick Wilde as we talk about QAnon, the mother of all conspiracies. But before we get to our main story tonight, teachers from all over the state of Arizona marched in a wildcat strike in an incredible show of solidarity. And Attica, you were there at one of the marches. What was your experience on that? So is it technically a wildcat strike if they formed a union? Like there is there is no teachers union in the state of Arizona. They literally formed one for this strike. Is it technically a wildcat strike? So wait, they formed a union just so that they could go on strike. So they weren't unionized before, but now they are. Right. They weren't unionized before. You know, it's something like 40 percent of the teachers have to take second jobs to be teachers to because to afford it. It could be too much. They they decided to unionize, even though it's technically illegal in Arizona and it's illegal to strike. They they unionized and went on strike anyway. So I don't know. In my book, the counts as a wildcat strike, but it, it's probably the first protest strike type thing i've been to that gets that like hits all the notes for me as much as i can expect when involving yourself with a mass group of liberals i was told there at the rally by another communist that the teacher who incited the whole thing and organized the whole thing the socialist himself but i don't know if that means universal health care socialist or like actual like workers democracy socialist but to compare it to the gun march which i talked about i think two shows ago where they like just went around in a circle and like were just led around by the police around the uh, government district on a Sunday where absolutely no one saw them. The the teachers were smart, and, and this was statewide. And the, the total count was something like 75,000 people in downtown, clogging up and shutting down downtown from the sports stadium, like a two mile march down the street to the Capitol building. Yeah, that was huge. There. Yeah, huge. And they stayed there for the whole day. And so the movement was called Red for Ed, which is why it ticked off like, oh, this has to be a socialist organizing it, right? Like, it's not just a coincidence. And man, there were so many other communists there because, like, we could blend in so easily with our red flags and not have to deal with the stupid, what's the red flag mean question? And then, like, have to try to explain it to them because I got that a lot at the gun march. And it hit all the notes. They marched through downtown, you know, they blocked roads. So people had to look and and listen and get it. They weren't able to be shoved off into a corner like the gun march was where no one was impacted. They went to the Capitol. They didn't occupy it permanently the way they did in West Virginia. Like, God, I wish that had happened. But they stayed there. They stayed there all damn day. And it was a little bit of a festival, but I mean, you know, it, it, it wasn't, it was still within the bounds of a strike, right? Like they had like drummers and stuff and all, you know, the teachers, the marching band teachers, you know, they got their, their class there and were marching around with their marching band stuff and you know singing songs and so you know that's not really in the like you know how some you know when liberals try to protest it often ends up as a parade you know this this was not a parade this was still very much a strike so they were teaching Um, the kids the union hymns that day they didn't there were no there weren't union hymns like it's not like that history is just dead and erased from history in arizona like even teachers they weren't singing union hymns. God, I wish they were. That would be amazing. No, it was just sort of, you know, marching band music. It, uh, what was it? The girls, I forget what it's actually called, but like the whole Japanese drum thing where you line up the huge drums and like you're literally moving your whole body to hit and reach across to the drum. There were a set of girls there who were doing that up on the stage that had been put up. It was cool, too, because the local anarchists or anarchists because they don't you know they refuse to go by a grouping right like the not the the not a party party was there with their little with their press distribution and it sort of became an impromptu summit of leftists because we had all these different leftists coming up and you know i sat down there uh and i talked with them and so you know we had like the local antifa kids come up and we had this guy from the PSL come up and then a guy from Socialist Alternative come up. It was like we all were kind of making each other aware of our presence 
and you know talking about like oh yeah we all need to like meet up and, and discuss what we're doing and uh see how where we can work together and this all happened in the middle of a seventy-five thousand person statewide teacher strike and it's it was so there was such a different in quality and purpose than like the other liberal protests marches and rallies i've been to that just seems kind of aimless and let themselves just sort of be walked around for no good goddamn reason and th there was power there there was things happening and, and and history was moving and it was very exciting to have been a part of i don't know i think it might be bigger there's a famous mind strike from the 30s in arizona that is an important part of labor history mostly because they lost they went on strike for three whole years and over those three years the labor was just replaced with scabs and the strike just sort of fizzled out because you know they didn't end up working there anymore right um, uh, one of the dangers of having a long-term drawn-out strike like that is of course the workers are going to get replaced so when you do a strike you need to have the intent of course of going back to work because really i mean that's the whole point of the strike is to improve working conditions. Right. I think, I think this might be bigger total in, in number than that mining strike. Probably just because, you know, there's a bigger population in Arizona. And you just came from all over the state for this. Like, hotels were full of teachers. Teachers were bussed around, down you know, from all the towns and cities to, to march on this. So it was it was it was such a marked improvement from what I've been experiencing so far of liberals trying to bumblefuck their way around, figuring out how to resist and not really getting anything done, just letting themselves be led around by the police into useless corners and alleyways where no one sees them. And and God, you know, I hope this is a knock on effect. I don't know. I'm not tied in with any of the politics of any of the other states where this has happened. So I don't know if this has spread to other workforces. Like the, the teachers were the easiest people who could have gone on strike. They're not easily replaceable. They're educated, skilled labor. They're state employees. It's not as easy as like all the McDonald's workers going on strike where it takes nothing to replace a McDonald's worker and they can all just be fired and you can go literally down to the homeless encampment and pick up more workers, which is literally something that Mark said, like the whole point of having homeless and unemployment is to have a reserve of, of workers. Now, interestingly enough, on, on that same note, it's actually been a good week for labor. Workers at a burger joint did successfully unionize the Burgerville workers. So congratulations on that. And they went with one of the more hardcore unions. They went straight up with the IWW. Uh, which I think is great. Uh, we always need more people in the IWW. And if you're thinking about joining the IWW, I'd highly encourage it. There's no branches in Phoenix. I've looked. They have a branch in Nogales, so they don't have a branch in Phoenix. Oh, that's awful. I went to a sort of march for the homeless today to, quote, find solutions to homelessness. We already know the solution to homelessness, but liberals don't, but that's beside the point. So I was there and, and it was only, there was only like eight people. It wasn't like the guy who, who put it together seemed really depressed about it. But the whole point was the, the people who came out were the people who cared. And now like there's a core group to actually work on this. And I was so excited because finally like the economic discourse has gotten to the homeless people, right? And the whole reason for this is that the reason why they were inspired to do this was because in January, Phoenix passed the law. Actually, I think it's a, a state of Arizona passed the law. It's illegal to give homeless people food, correct? Yeah. And, and while most states have that kind of thing, most of the time it's just not enforced. Why would you enforce that? What would be the justification for enforcing that? But they're actually enforcing it. And they're not just enforcing it on like people who go and give them food at the park. They literally have shut down churches and charity organizations with this law. You know, I mean, literally, like, images of just the Gestapo marching into churches and seizing their cooking Pines. equipment. No, not the, they didn't take the money from the churches. They, they shut down their kitchen, slapped them with a bunch of health code violation fines as much as they could bloat the bill to intimidate the church from continuing it any longer. You will uh, not do the work of Jesus Christ in this establishment. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's mind-boggling. And we were out there, eight of us, and like, man, not just regular police, 
were driving past and driving up to us, talk to us all day. Like there were secret police. I could tell the cars that were sitting there and that had been sitting there idling all the, you know, the entire time we were there and that left when we left for us eight people marching about homelessness. I mean, you know, it proves my theory, not that it's my theory. I mean, it's a basic leftist fact that, that, that as you touch more and more affected and alienated and poorer people, the more the level of policing increases. The state very quickly starts coming down on it. Right. So, you know, I wasn't surprised, but still, for the level of police state that Phoenix operates under, where you can't drive down the street without seeing a cop and there's secret police watching the eight person homeless people protest is pretty wild. And there should be an IWW here, but we've got a PSL branch opening up. We've had the DSA for a while. We've got the anarchists who they do things. They do things. They, they don't organize for revolution. They don't do parties, but, but they do things and it's effective. They're the front line shock troops and i respect the hell out of them because they're you know while we're in our little meeting talking about party stuff and holding our little inner party elections and stuff they're out there getting tear gas so they're not they're they're just as valuable even Dude, if don't worry our, our turn to get tear gassed will come soon enough uh, so. well i've already been tear gassed and like it was kind of nothing <laughs> it was just sort of did you do what Baked Alaska did? Like, oh, milk, milk. No, no, I just sort of walked around in it because it's like, it was just sort of, I felt like being in my kitchen because I, I, I cook with a lot of Indian spices and curry and peppers. And it just felt like I was in my kitchen. And I mean, I was coughing a little. It felt like I, it was basically like burned curry. Like I was breathing burned curry smoke. I mean, it was irritating. Yes, roasted those uh, those jalapenos. You carelessly opened that oven door, and you just took a big whiff of it right there. That's what yeah, it was like. That's the, that was it. But yeah, no, I think that the big uh, counterpoint here, though, is with the the Burgerville thing. I think it's a positive send off here because it shows that yes, these you know so called lower jobs, as like some people like to say, they can unionize. And it is illegal to retaliate against people that are wanting to unionize as well. So in, in whatever people, state they were, it's not here. This so is in it's still Washington, right? Yeah. So actually, it was uh, it was Portland, Oregon. Uh, so actually, oh, yeah. the way that actually works is is it's not illegal to unionize in Arizona. Arizona is a right to work state. What it is illegal to do, it's illegal if you unionize the shop to require all the workers to be in the union. And that creates a problem because that means that people don't want to be in the union, but they want to have the benefits of being in the union. So they basically don't join the union. They still benefit because there's unionized workers there and they don't pay the dues, which really aren't that much. Like when people talk about union dues for the most part, if your union dues taken out a sizable chunk of your paycheck, perhaps you need to speak to your union about that separating ways from the main body, joining the IWW or joining some other union that maybe is a little bit cheaper if that's what they're doing. But for the most part, CWA, IWW, AFL, CIO, for the most part, don't have expensive dues. Well, I know even it's legal for your employer here for where there aren't unions. There is a labor board process where if your employer owes you money, you can make a claim with the labor department and it's basically a rubber stamp where they send a letter to your company and the company has to shell the money. But they can retaliate or you they can fire you for doing that. And you know, of course they will fire you for doing that. So it's it's a total nonsense non starter. See, and that's that's real BS is when your employer can fire you for taking a legal action when it's legitimate. If you have a complaint like your employer's not paying you, why are you even there at that point? At that point, you're just a charity to them and they're screwing you over by not paying you. And they should not get to be able to fire you if that's what they're doing. They should have to pay and then if they do fire you, there should be legal repercussions for that. Of course, it's also Arizona. Of <laughs> you course, know, yes. didn't give a shit if hundreds of people died in a mine collapse just let them die they're making 
profit for somebody. So I don't understand how, how people can like not be communists. Like it's just so fucking obvious how how they're used. And it's just oh well, you know, I get to come home from work and play my game for four hours and that's good enough for me. Yeah, but you can barely afford rent. Yeah, but I, I pay it. And it's goddamn. It's propaganda. Your, your ass is pampered too compared to the way people worked not even two generations ago where working killed you a lot of the time and you were forced to take that work in those mines because that's all there was and there was a high likelihood you would die i mean hell mesophilioma commercials and people still question this i don't understand how it's not a foregone conclusion that profit and companies are bad it's it's all about the propaganda now, I did want to go ahead and get on to our main story tonight here. The the big Q Anon or Q as they call it. Honestly, there's really not much to this, but I still thought it was just so comical that people fall for this. For those that don't know, Q or Q Anon is a poster that posts on 8chan and 4chan with these really obscure posts. They're usually like lists of questions and phrases and stuff like that. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And he claims to be a Q level clearance, which is a clearance within the Department of Energy and that he is part of the Trump administration. That's the claim. I think it's bullshit. It it becomes more apparent that it is once you start looking into things. And what happens is, is he posts all this weird stuff and his followers look at it and then they start connecting connecting the dots and next thing you know it explodes into this big conspiracy of everything like literally there's a huge diagram that's amazing it's a work of art let's just say that and they just conflate everything like for instance Q will mention something on his twitter and trump will say a word uh or he'll post something on twitter thereafter and they'll look at it and they'll be like oh these words are identical trump used the same word so we're verified here it's real it's legit what's your take on this attica i mean it's just standard 4chan conspiracy fair pizza gate and i'm i'm surprised that no one's it really is it's it's it is an extension of pizza gate actually because how is this guy not selling t-shirts how how are none of these people selling t-shirts like that's what that's what the whole tea party was about. It was about selling t-shirts and hats and snake flags and then lowering taxes and giving more money to billionaires. Well, th- but okay, so the tea because they got a t-shirt. The t-shirts are going to come later. Hey, he's, he's still working on that. You can guarantee they're going to be coming. So, so you know, it's your standard 4chan bullshit of, you know, Trump victim complex plus, you know, pedophiles plus secret base plus. Yeah, I, it's I just think it's so wacko and th- stuff that doesn't make any sense. And it's just how you really have to have spent your adolescence in this corner of the internet on 4chan and never have stepped outside it to, to be susceptible to this kind of thing. And I know, I know there's people like that. I, in 2000. In eight, I saw this for what it was and was trying to get people to wake up and say, like, this is a big deal. This isn't just the Internet drama. Like, this is going to bite you in the ass really hard. This is... Yeah, I've never know. seen, like, people just so had about it. it. This is something that, that both is, in a way, like a very old scam, but it's also totally new. Yeah, because this is just more, um, this kind of stuff used to be spun in magazines and shit here, tabloids at the grocery store. There used to be a conspiracy theory, I, I forget what it's called, but it was also a scam. And I think it was something called like Nessad or something like that. Basically, it was this idea for this plan to create this like overhaul of the tax and monetary system so it was kind of all that ron paul stuff but this was even before him really back in the the 90s and the 2000s and this person came discovered this plan and really started like pushing it as their platform but they also had like some weird like dividend stock or something that they were trying to sell except it was all fake and he got all these people to buy into his freaking scam he would always come up with these like absurd stories as to why their dividends hadn't landed yet. Be like, oh, well, you know, the government's fighting the aliens right now and there's this big battle. It's like, <laughs> it got so crazy. What? There are angels and demons and, and 
and the Jews were involved. Just like everything. The Jews? Of course. Why would they not be? <laughs> the, the, the ending scene to history of the world with the Jews in space. That's what. That's why their dividends didn't come in. <laughs> Yeah, it's not because it was a scam. It was because of the Jews, obviously. I mean, come on. <laughs> and let me guess, he was never arrested. They never. Oh no, no, back. no. They t okay. So the people did not get their money back uh, in this scam. Uh, so they didn't get the money back. But the person that perpetrated it ended up dying poor, and there was another perpetrator that ended up dying in prison. Oh, let me guess. He, they used all their money on drugs and heroin and hard shit. I don't know. They probably believe they're on bullshit too. If they're, like, it wouldn't surprise kind of me that they did believe it to some extent because if, if you start lying enough, you do start believing it. It would That part does, would not surprise me. But, you know, kind of getting back so this story is just incredible because it's so intricate. So there's all these posts of just like random stuff and it's like oh he posted about storm and so like they and trump said storm and then a uh, later post q put in like three plus marks and then trump later tweeted out in a tweet with three plus marks it's like that kind of stuff or looking for like he's gonna say small in a tweet soon kind of thing and then on small business day of course trump uses the word small I mean, it's it's stuff that's either easily predictable or it's just totally random looking at like random letters in Trump's tweets, that kind of thing. It's it's crazy. But one of the big mythologies around this is that Trump is working with. Whoa, whoa. OK, so they're saying Trump, Trump is working with Comey to arrest the Democrats and like the whole story is like flipped on its head in Q world, right? So instead of it being the traditional story, like we all know it, where Trump's being investigated, that's just a smoke screen because Trump is a 17 dimensional chess player who has the entire world wrapped around his fingers and knew all of this before he was even coming in as president, right? And so Comey went to him and said, we're gonna pull up the smoke screen and then when he got into office, he started working with Comey to have Barack Obama, Podesta, and Hillary Clinton all secretly arrested, which is why you never see them wear shorts or skirts because they're all wearing ankle bracelets. <laughs> and that's why you never see Obama in a skirt. <laughs> Yes, Hillary wears pants because, not because she always wore pants, but because she's hiding that ankle bracelet. And it gets better because any time now, any time now, although he's been saying this for like six months now almost, it's just around the corner. There's going to be a great awakening in this country and the police are going to arrest these people for running a pedophilia ring and they're going to send them off to Guantanamo. A great awakening. Uh, like what? Like on a national level? Like people are just going to go and... Well, it's, it's part of the whole Make America Great Again thing. The timeline we're living in is like if Terry Pratchett wrote a book with Philip Dick. That's the timeline we're in right now. <laughs> It's amazing that people believe this. What this really represents is a pathology that exists on the right to basically fabricate a reality because they don't like the truth. I really think that that's what this is. Like, this is like some desperation fantasy level, almost schizophrenic BS. Yeah, and they all want to participate. I mean, you know, they're a bunch of lonely incels who don't have a life, who are going nowhere, who are going to graduate from high school or college and go nowhere and work a wage job, and they need to be an hero. I know you know, it's, it's not even term, like but... uh, it's not even like high schoolers. Like there are some big names out there that are talking about QAnon right now, like Roseanne Barr. For instance, like nobody oh, cares God. about Roseanne Barr, but are like, you serious? <laughs> are you fucking serious? Ro Roseanne Barr and 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 the guy from fucking Home Improvement, fucking <laughs> 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 on 4chan waiting for the latest Q drop. 
it's literally Q. Like it's literally Q from Star Trek. He's just oh my god. <laughs> our time, our timeline is just so fucked up. He has to get in and see what kind of bullshit he can get away with. And for those who don't know, like Q is basically like space Loki uh, from Star Trek. He is this mischievous, all-powerful being. Q, Q is space Discord, or is Discord pony Q? I'm sorry, was it too brony? And yeah, dude, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Too yeah, brony. You gotta, you gotta log off now. You're fired from the show. Oh, fuck. sorry. <laughs> sorry, brah. What about the what about the magic of fucking friendship? Magic of these. Never mind. Never mind. My little comrade solidarity is magic. But this all feeds into that deeper narrative of fake news kind of being the danger that it is. Like people are creating these false realities using just whatever straws that they can grasp to do it. And I think that Q kind of perfectly represents all of that. This is kind of like a soft manifestation of it. Like, yeah, Q followers are religiously fanatic and that is very dangerous because these people like you if you mock q in any way you're you're bound to probably get some heck about it on the internet it's not a hashtag that you want to be on let's just put it that way but this all does feed into that like whole fake news narrative in general which actually kind of did get a recent like one up here i don't know if you saw did you see the thing with uh, jordan pill where he made a video using some cgi magic to manipulate video of barack obama speaking it looked and sounded like barack obama speaking if you kick down the resolution a little bit it it looks very convincing in full res you can see the cgi a little bit and it, it looks a little bit off and you can kind of tell something's going on but you you downscale it just a little bit and it does look legitimate or you put a tv filter over that and broadcast that on air nobody's going to be able to tell the difference and so i think that this further creates an environment in which fake news is going to spread like wildfire because we've we've already seen how even just like the obvious BS with Q spreads and you see how like the photoshops of like Antifa people waving Nazi flags and all that kind of BS like get spread around and all of a sudden they have a new tool in their possession that really creates a lot of they could create a lot of damage. So do they actually have this weapon? Because Jordan Peele's not in the alt-right. He's connected, well-connected to Hollywood. He, you know, they can afford this cinematic CGI stuff. Is this something the average 4 chaner can just throw onto their gaming computer and make Obama say that, you know, he's a Muslim and the Muslims are coming or whatever? Well, I think it's going to be a few years out before they can do that. (laughs) So, I mean, you know, there's a big question. Why didn't they do that already with Muslims in general, with ISIS? Right, if the software exists, I think it's because the software is new, but it is something that is commercially available. And of course we know 4chan, they don't care about software licenses. They're gonna get their hands on it regardless. That's going to be a problem. Now, because of availability and because of difficulty level, you're right. There may be an issue in actually using it. So it's probably going to be, I would say, maybe six months to 18 months out. But it really does go to show we do need to be aware that this is a thing. And I'm not so much as worried about... 4chan using this as I am like the Russians using it for instance because you put this in the hands of a state actor and all of a sudden it's a different story because it's a whole different level of budgeting true I didn't necessarily think of that but governments have had the ability to fabricate stuff all the time half the shit we've gone to war over has been fabricated I don't know Uh, because this would actually imply what Uh, maybe if it's our government collusion with the media but if it's the Russians doing it they don't necessarily need to collude they just need to drop it there and they know that there's going to always be that group of mostly conservatives that are dumb enough that they're going to fall for this this stuff right so just watching from I don't think that the news is that easily caught off guard. I mean, the news is manufactured anyway. They only say what they want to say. They don't actually report on things, you know, every story's already been written. What's more likely 
just watching from what they've done before when there's been a shooting or a terrorist attack and they go to 4chan and they scramble up the activity and they come up with a bunch of uh, conspiracy stories and then Google puts it on the front page of Google. Yeah, News that's what I would news. be afraid of is like they create something, claim it's from NBC and it gets on the front page of Google because of course Google's not doing their thing but that they're this, supposed but to you do. Know, this, this already is in their echo chamber, their echo chamber of conspiracy bullshit. It's not that they're going to make stuff to get it onto NBC and then to spread fake news on the news that's quote trustworthy or whatever. And they'll have Sean Hannity run with it. Well, okay, so like Fox News will pick up anything and run with it, but that's also now within the sphere of their conspiracy theory. So it's it's just another tool that they get to poke with their own beehive. It's literally it's the game of stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. It's what they do. They throw on a mask to go beat themselves up and then say it was Anifa, so they're all angry at Anifa or whatever. Like what was that, Laura Southerner or Laura Loomer that like popped her own tire? and then claimed it was Antifa. Yeah, it's a further radicalization tool for the people within their sphere. But I don't see them growing. The people who have been sucked down into that hole have already been sucked down into that hole. They're at the point now where it's gotten so ridiculous. It's going to be really hard to recruit people in because you look at that group and you're like, whoa, I don't want to be anywhere near this. They'll always be suckers for scams, but they won't. they're also making it so complicated that it's hard to get into at this point, right? There's <laughs> that image, <laughs> that Picasso art is not a good primer. You can't just send that to someone and say, it's the Jews, and it becomes that self-evident, oh, oh yeah, it's the Jews. It's so, they're so far down their own hole. It, it would be like if I were to get into this, I had no place where to start, except the basic Jews are bad or whatever. They're, they're so far up their own butts that they can't even successfully and convincingly false flag at this point because they don't even understand how leftists speak and communicate or terminology or anything like that. So when they do try to like fake something, they always have the Nazi insert because that's the only direction that they need to go. And people on the left are definitely not Nazis. So there's always just this big tail that comes out whenever they try to do this. Right, but their false flagging is not really, is not an attempt to work people up against the left. It's, 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 they're hitting their own hive with it. They're whacking themselves with a stick with this false flag to get themselves all worked up and mobilized. It's how they mobilize all of these gamers who can't be bothered to go up, to get up and go eat something other than Doritos. It's an outrage factory, and this will be another tool in the outrage factory, and well, it'll probably get linked. To be like, to be fair, what? all of those people that are in that gaming community that are pretty much like demotivated, and all they do is like eat Doritos and, and Jo all day. They're cleaning up their attitude. They found uh, Daddy, uh, what's his name? Yeah, didn't Jordan Peterson? Jordan tell Peterson, clean, yeah, clean their yeah, because, Jordan Peterson, yeah, yeah. <laughs> clean your room yeah so they they got jordan peterson there to uh, tell them hey clean your room it'll make you feel better there buddy you know if you take a shower and, and put on some nice clothes people won't look at you so funny so like they, they God, literally you took think, that you think hitler ever had to say that do you think do you, do you think ernst rom ever had to go around to the fucking sa and uh, tell them to clean their room. I, son, I want you to clean your shit up here. That's more U.S. Army. That's this more uh, R. Lee. I, I'm just out of it today. <laughs> Man, I must be doing like 420 late this today or something. I don't know. This this tool, this ability to mimic any broadcast, any any person, any footage and make it move with your own mouth and record. And if you're good at imitating a voice, you can make it passable. Is going to be used A, to further radicalize themselves and whack their own beehive. And B, when they try to crypto in rooms, it's gonna be used as fake evidence 
for their point. And that that's the most dangerous thing, I think, is that, you know, they'll, they'll spread that in rooms. Apolitical, I don't care about politics, centrists will be astonished at this footage of Antifa saying kill all the Jews, right, or whatever. And then they'll that, that will spread around through the conversation. And then, oh, you know, I heard Antifa, they want to kill all the Jews or whatever. So it, it, it's going to be misinformation in their typical crypto sphere. But, you know, is this a great benefit that we have this much advanced warning? Because we don't, we rarely have advanced warning for their stupid tricks. Yeah, well, I, um, I do think with the election coming up, we do need to be aware of it because we did have a state actor attempt to manipulate our elections last time. And I don't see that changing. It looks like it's actually ramping up, not calming down. Yeah, but what? How, how would they use this to get people who weren't already going to vote for Trump and Trumpists? And you, get, and, you, you <laughs> spread it on Facebook and concerned people that don't research anything will think it's true because their friend showed it to them on Facebook. But anyone who already hasn't picked a side in this isn't, isn't going to pick a side. Anyone who, who isn't already buying Trump and Trump accessories isn't going to buy Trump and Trump accessories no matter what video they're shown. And who would you have? What's the main enemy? Who would you have to use that technology on to change their voice? Like you, You're going to go around and keep track of every person and, and find every piece of footage for every person running for a local county city seat and spread disinformation about that it was easy last time with hillary because oh hillary everyone hates hillary and you can make hillary say any, anything and fake yeah i think that they would only do it with the major state candidates the ones that they would be afraid of, of flipping democrat those kind of things it would definitely be very strategically targeted so that would be your first clue that something's up they're not going to go after like you said city officials right then you know democrats are already whipped up to vote for democrats no matter what so they're going to call i think they're smart enough now to call bullshit on a fake cgi video of their candidate saying you know kill the jews or something obviously that's coming out of a nazi mouth right because they're really bad at imitating someone who anyone is not a nazi that is true and like you said with the democrat they got the d shoved so far in them that it ain't coming out for a while you know it's gonna be whipped up used to what whip up republicans who are apathetic i mean I yeah guess i, I could, could see, see that, that yeah mm-hmm. but, you know to, to people republicans who have dropped off the radar because they oh, fuck trump this is disgusting this is what i voted for oh but this democrat said that they're communist and here's footage of it all oh, my god i have to go vote republican to save america i could see that i could see that but but in the races we've had and the polling that's done, that's shown, the Democrats are ahead by miles, even even though it's this early. Well, if you visit Infowars every day, you would not believe that in the slightest. <laughs> well, yeah, they but, take they take know. one little like victory or whatever, and they conflate it out. Like, oh, the blue wave's dead. A Republican won in some minor district that he was going to win yeah. anyway. Anyone who watches Infowars has already joined the call. So that is true. <laughs> But it, it is something guess, like, that you need to pay attention. They have this weapon, but I, I think it's really hard to deploy it. Let's let's flow. Let's flow on. Yeah, let's flow on. So Facebook fueling ethnic tensions in Sri Lanka and Myanmar. Gizmo reports that Facebook is fueling violence in Sri Lanka and did basically nothing to stop it. And the, the story here is basically not that Facebook is producing. They don't anti- have any moderators. So whenever people spread fake news or whatever, it just doesn't get deleted and people spread it like wildfire. Right, and I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of, I don't know what the anti-Rohingya slur would be, but I'm sure that just is, you know, flies all over the place. But it's not like it doesn't fly, this feels like a case of look at it happening in this other country so it gets news, even though the same thing happens here. Like, people type out the N-word on Facebook all the time. So the difference is is that when it happens in Sri Lanka or Myanmar, 
it's not like when it happens in the US where like people get upset. So what happens in, in Sri Lanka and Myanmar is somebody will post something like this guy put sterilization pills in my food, which is an actual story that spread and it was a lie, it wasn't true. The guy that got accused of this actually had to hide because there is mobs out looking to kill him. And, Jesus. And then of course the mobs go out and they kill other people that they think are protecting this person. So that's really what that is. So it's it's not really comparable to what's going on in the United States. It is in the fact that it's fake news, but the magnitude of it shows you just exactly how dangerous fake news is in its entirety, which is actually kind of like why I wanted to cover Q today, because you whip people up into frenzies, you get them into religious fervors about this kind of stuff. You spread out fake clips and stuff like that. You have people absolutely convinced. And next thing you know, these people, even if there's just a few of them, if they're ready for violence, it gets dangerous really fast. Fake news at this point is essentially people well, it's lies on and defamation. social media being unmoderated and spreading lies to stoke ethnic tensions. Like it's not even, it doesn't even have to be a news article anymore. They can post a picture of their lunch and say this dirty whoever spit in my food, go kill them and people will go kill them. But the problem here, like I said, is like you whip people up into a frenzy and all of a sudden you've got people that are, are willing to do things. And it's just like last week we had the Waffle House shooter. He shot four people inside a Waffle House and we don't really know his motive. We believe that he was, he was right wing. He was part of the incel community or actually no. Mm, that was our next guy, actually. I'm sorry. This guy, he probably <laughs> he was an incel. Killed uh, a lot of people last week. Yeah, so there was, yeah, there were two stories, actually. And and so basically what happened with uh, the Waffle House story is he was kind of nuts. I assumed that he probably was an incel, by the way. Based off the story, he believed Taylor Swift was stalking him. And, and this is the kind of people who will believe in Pizzagate conspiracy stories. They'll also believe that Taylor Swift is stalking them too, which it, it makes them very convincing, right? Just imagine somebody coming up to you and saying, Hillary Clinton's a pedophile and Taylor Swift is stalking me! Which, by the way, is a Ray Stevens song. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Taylor Swift is stalking me is a stupid Ray Stevens song. And Ray Stevens is just like this like washed up comedian that turned like he, he was a country music comedian that turned like he, he started singing about tea party stuff and turned into garbage. Yeah. It's sad, but he has a song about Taylor Swift stalking him too. <laughs> it's just, this is, I don't like this timeline. So this e epidemic of, quote, fake news, which is essentially just conspiracy stories run wild uh, with no moderation, is being responded to with people looking up at their CEO gods in the sky and saying, Facebook, why aren't you doing anything? They're getting f filthy rich off of it. People don't realize when they're on Facebook, they're doing the labor of Facebook. They're making Facebook. They're making the product with their interaction. They Anything are the workers and they don't realize it. Yeah. And it's sold to them as like a, a, a pleasure thing. And, and Facebook is getting rich and Twitter is getting rich off of the conflict. So they design their platform to stoke as much conflict as possible. Like really you, you, you look at this and you can't, you can't, it's not an easy well, Jack on blame. Twitter who owns Twitter at Jack is a Nazi sympathizer. He's made this clear. Yeah, no, I mean that, that it's, <laughs> And, and that that's even, is even more proof that the social media is engineering genocide. You know, the business in Myanmar, that's socially engineering genocide. Exactly. And then, of course, and because they get they get wealthy off of the conflict. And Twitter is literally designed to keep different factions of people fighting with each other. It's, you know, it's the Foucault quote of everything being a prison. 
It's even the social media is designed as a prison to cut you off and section you into portions and identities of people and then pit you against each other to keep you fighting. And it's you, you, you can blame Russia and you can blame the U.S. and you can blame Internet trolls, but it is it is the fundamental framework and structure of the very basic Internet, right down to the authoritarian system of having admins, right? The, the admins who have all the power and get to decide whether the forum can just spew race theory shit all the time. And then you get cells like 4chan that produce conspiracy theories and they just multiply. And Facebook and Twitter look at this and go, oh, hell yeah, we're going to get rich off of this. This is going to get people fighting. And it results in literal genocide. Yeah, and then, of course, it also results in in these people uh, like the Waffle House shooter who already are mentally unstable, grabbing a gun and going out and killing people. And this guy probably would have killed more people in the Waffle House had his gun not had jammed up or ran out of bullets. It's unclear as to what exactly happened. But an African-American uh, guy that was hiding in the bathrooms rushed out when he heard the gun stop and he, he jumped him because he realized, well, if this guy's going to try to take everybody out in the restaurant, I might as well try to jump him. And so he saved a lot of uh, people doing that. And then guess what? He's... Facebook and Twitter is going to make even more money off of that because that's going to be a news story. and Everyone's going to be shocked. And everyone's going to be talking about it, you know, trending hashtag. And they can up the price for the ad space that will be in the timeline. And, and it's disgusting. Like it's profiting of off of engineered death. And stupid fucking people don't get it. The liberals look up to God Zuckerberg and say, do something Zuckerberg. And he gets hauled before the Senate and asked a bunch of questions. Everyone knows the answer to. He gets to say he had a growing up moment at 33 and skedaddle on back to his Silicon Valley Zuckerberg palace. literally doesn't get it. He's somebody that had to literally take human classes. He doesn't understand it, human interaction. He doesn't, I, I really don't even think he cares. I think he is so self-absorbed and detached emotionally from everything. He doesn't really give a crap about anybody like internally in his mind. He just pretends no, to. He, it's just how it's an obsession with his project and a byproduct, how much money can he make off of that project? And he couldn't give a shit whether it results in genocide or not. But then what's the answer? Policing Facebook? Well, the answer is to turn all this stuff into public property and, and democratize it. And then all of a sudden you'll find that the Nazis have no hiding place. But you know, when it's private property gets to make money off of the, the outrage and manufacture the genocide, he, he, the Nazis are there to stay. They're the money maker. They piss everyone off and make everyone yell and get resistance Twitter going and they'll fumble with each other and fight with each other. And of course, they won't understand Jack the favors them. Them, of course personally as well so he takes their side right exactly so and he's not even taking their side out of a monetary movement he takes their side politically after this is over they're they're gonna be as responsible as siemens was for the holocaust 4chan as well i i think bears a lot of responsibility uh because one of the other stories here of course you know we got the waffle house shooter here but the toronto van driver the uh, freaking shouted out the 4chan before he did his massacre in the van where he killed 10 people and injured 15 others in Toronto. He literally proclaimed himself as an incel. He invoked the name of Elliot Rogers, who is this... He's, he was basically a mass murderer that killed a bunch of people uh, years ago. That I think was it was like, like six. UCLA, right? Yeah, it was UCLA. It was like six years ago. And this guy's been mo uh, martyred as like a saint in incel circles. Like people basically worship this guy and treat him as a hero. They call him the supreme gentleman and all that bullshit. And 4chan, and to a lesser extent, until Reddit banned them because they were just that extreme that Reddit just said, no, we're not dealing with you anymore. Which, by the way, it takes a lot to get banned from Reddit. It really does. But these social media organizations, 4chan, 8chan, Reddit to a lesser extent, they all bear some responsibility for 
basically curating this. And that's really where it's all, uh, most of it's coming from is from these chants and flowing outward into the rest of the social media. It's like a, like a, the, the, the septic backing out into the toilet and then flooding your floor. It all came from the septic tank, which is 4chan. A pretty apt analogy there, don't you think? Yeah, they're, it's, they're, they're the, the cesspool that, that originates everything from the sewers. So, you know, it's... But of course, the Q-believing conspiracy theory, I want to live in a fantasy world, people, like InfoWars, decided that uh, they're going to make their own story up. This guy has a, a Muslim-looking name, so he was a, he was Islamic, and that, that was why he killed all these people. He was just committing jihad, which there has been almost no mention of religion in this story whatsoever. I couldn't find his religion mentioned in any, any article articles and I looked pretty deep for it because I was like okay yeah let's let's look into this see if the religion was a no the only motivating factor was is that he was an incel uh which I want to explain for those because we've been saying the term but we haven't defined it yet so basically it is somebody who is involuntarily celibate they have this idea in their mind that they deserve to get laid and that's that's it and they hate women because women won't sleep with them and that's why they're going out and they're they're killing all these people that's why the uh, toronto guy he, most of the people that he killed and drove over were women in these attacks and in fact he actually said that he wanted to kill every chad and stacy which are incel terms like a chad is just a guy that pounds every woman and the stacy or the women that fall for chads and it's just now that mainstream liberal media is realizing it's yeah exactly so one of the things that really got me about this whole entire thing is like all of the news sites and stuff like that news journals started publishing articles what's an incel like they never freaking heard it before and it's like no these journalists know what this is and they know that most of their audience probably knows what this is because they probably ran across the term by now because it's it's been out for a while i don't know anybody that's been on the internet and hasn't come across this term and looked it up and then immediately was grossed out or freaked out by it the, another thing like the media doesn't report on anything like it's only because their hands force that they've mentioned the stuff and it's it's you know in the forefront and it's it's been a thing for a long time there's a generation of men who tie their self-worth to property who have no property and no money and are stuck in the confines of the idea of a relationship is a man with money possesses a woman and therefore they can't possess the woman because they have no money and no property and they and feel so entitled they to, to having it too yeah which is kind of funny because they're the usually the ones screaming about like people being entitled and stuff like that and then they feel entitled to have sex in fact there was this one twitter posters that i came across literally in a fedora replying to a woman saying that if you had sex with us then we wouldn't have to kill you i think that was not I think you misread that because I looked at his Twitter and there was nothing else in Sally there, there. There was nothing else in Sally. Yeah, because I looked at that and I thought that was a really strange aberration. So I don't know if the person was being serious or not or if the person was... Because most people that are like that, they freaking rage about this stuff, right? It was kind of weird because it was kind of a one-off. So I have to wonder if it was like a really bad attempt at comedy and he just doesn't understand comedy and i'm gonna give him that benefit of the doubt i i really do kind of feel your point on that one i'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one but my god he had a fedora on and it was just the whole stare the only thing that was missing was like some my little pony stuff on the page that would have sealed the deal for me <laughs> or like uh like a neck beard oh jeez. and speaking of that ne neck beards like 50 of them were supposed to gather in Noonan, Georgia for the uh, National Socialist Movement rally and only a couple dozen showed up. But the disturbing part about this particular story isn't the fact that the neo-Nazis had a rally because they were met by hundreds of counter-protesters. They were largely outnumbered. That was the non-story there. The story was, was the police response to this. 
They took a small Georgia town of, I think it was like 30,000 people or something like that. It's Noonan, Georgia. And they armed the police to the teeth and sent 42 law enforcement agencies in full military gear. Over 700 law enforcement agents there, all decked out with, with riot gear, and, military gear, semi-automatic weapons. And aimed AR-15 in the face of kids backed up against the wall. I mean, I don't know if they were kids. They all look pretty young. Like Yeah, they're screaming like to remove kids. their masks and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, which they were enforcing an anti-KKK no mask law against the people that were protesting the KKK, basically. But what this really kind of made me realize is this is actually going to be the, the future of policing in America for these kind of events. We're going to see more of this with all of the, the shootings and police brutality that you keep hearing and the protests that are going on with that. I think we're going to see that method applied to those protests Really, I think it's going to be a very bloody summer if things do not cool down. And this isn't like hoping for that or looking forward to that. This it's is just looking at historical trends. That's because, the next level of their escalation. Well, of course it is. And it looks like we're headed towards that with the police brutality situation again. We're going to have another Ferguson moment simply because it's due to happen with as often as it happens in the United States. And people aren't backing down from this. People are actually getting no, out in the streets every time this happens. Yeah. And it happens on a weekly basis almost. So yeah. it's due to and happen. It, it may seem hard to realize because the news most often doesn't report it, but you look, if you're, as, if you're tied into leftist media, you're gonna see how often someone gets murdered by by a cop and then there's like a 100, 200 person procession through the street. And it's not here, not just here, it's in Germany, it's in France, it's in Greece. It's happening everywhere. Yeah, it is, and, and everywhere they go. seem to be happening is in the UK, and that's probably because Corbyn has a lot of the people's hope and faith, and I think they're just sort of waiting for him. But you know, it may even happen there too. It, it, this is this is happening everywhere. The police have been militarized over the past decade, and they want to use their toys, and they've adopted this mindset that they're the Punisher, and they're they're cleansing society, and they're going to open up one of these days. And you're going to see. They even I mean, like they wear even... the the Punisher stuff too. Like <laughs> they have like the it. belt buckles with the Punisher face on it. And they got the, the ones that say, like, uh, like kill them all, let God sort them out kind of crap. It's like all the shit that you see in the Bud K novelty magazines next to the Nazi merchandise, which they probably buy that, too, and keep that in their private collection. I was driving up the street today. I, the police must have just been stretched thin today because they pulled out, like, all of their secret police cars with the secret sirens and saw the lights. And this truck was being the police car stationed at this road that was blocked off for construction uh and he had the fucking punisher sticker on the back of the truck and the siren lights were on not not the noise but just the light to say hey there's construction here in case you didn't notice and i just looked at them like wow i so really want to i really want to know where they get off thinking that they can call themselves the good guys while they decorate themselves in the symbols of death uh, are from we head the to toe you're are not we? the good Why? guys if you're it's wearing skulls! It's literally, are we the baddies? <laughs> Hans, we have skulls on our hats. It literally is the are we the baddies skit. <laughs> you, you can't know. You're not the good guys if you're out there adorned in symbols of death pointing guns at people and shooting unarmed people in their yards. You're just not. I mean, God, it didn't take much more than 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 the Czar's guard to shoot twenty so people protesting outside the palace. It was the palace, right? Yes, it was. Yeah, 
crosses outside the palace to start the July Revolution. And that was a liberal revolution. Well, if they're not careful, they're going to find out that that thin blue line's going to get a lot thinner. Yeah. You know, they're not invincible. They have all these tanks and all this weaponry, and they think that they're armed like an army, and they are armed like an army, but... Well, they are, and that's what gives them the, the confidence to enforce the edicts of the state and the corporate will upon the people. But, you know, every time I see some, like, they run away. They're, they're cowards. When it came down to it, it with them pointing the guns at the counter protesters who weren't doing anything were there peacefully assembling with them pointing guns in their faces screaming at them uh dividing them up uh so that uh, they wouldn't be a threat with all of that simply it goes to show whose side they're really on because they weren't there for the nazis yeah, you know, and I continue to watch liberal protests after liberal protests coordinate and let themselves get co-opted by police and have police contacts and tell the police everything they're going to do. And it's like, oh, God, when the fuck are you going to get it that they're laughing at you around the corner because you're so stupid to involve them in everything to for them to escort your little parade? And people need to realize they don't need the permission of the police to do anything. It's not in the Constitution. There's nothing in the Constitution that says, oh, you need to go to the police to have a lawful assembly. You need to go to the police to exercise your freedom of speech. Nope. Hey, guess what? It's not in the Constitution, buddy. And by letting them do this, you're letting them take away your rights. What little you have left. I mean, the good news is, though... In, in terms of like on the neo-Nazi front though, Stormfront is probably gonna be shutting down because the owner's wife is tired of paying the bills for the website. It has finally gotten too expensive for them to run it because they've had a slump in donations. They've had a, why have they had a slump in donations when, when the neo-Nazis are more active than ever? Maybe they just got complacent. I don't know. Or maybe they all don't have jobs. They all don't have jobs. Yeah, a few of them do. Like, yeah, they're <laughs> they're a uh, they're a full time breeder, a Pokemon breeder. But I think it just kind of goes to show that they're not invincible. Uh, they are definitely in a position where they are compromised. And we've kind of seen like their slow decline recently. Like it seems like they're they're active. And even with like the cops like siding with them and everything, I think we still got this. As long as we don't freak out or anything like that. And as long as we're willing to, unfortunately, it looks like maybe have to go up against the police because that's who they're going to protect then i and i think i think that'll be a breaking moment for a lot of liberals well know. realizing that the police are not their friends anymore yeah you know if the police ever just open up with their rifles on what are going to end up being unmasked to be a bunch of high school and college students well, I don't know. Then again, Kent, Kent State didn't throw the, the, the country into revolution. It should have, but it didn't. And that was the military shooting college kids. I think that things are a little bit different now. People are more desperate than they were back then because the difference is, and like you've said on the show before, is if you shut up, if you were a good consumer, if you went to work and did your best, uh, you can be bribed into buying a house and living a relatively decent life. And that was the promise of, of American capitalism. And that promise has been taken away. So now you have people being told, sit down, shut up, go to work, obey. Oh, and by the way, uh, you're not going to be able to afford a house or anything like that. You're going to live you know, from rental to rental all your life. And we're going to make as much money off of you as possible. So we're going to make things just expensive for you. Things are a lot different than they were now. Living standards per dollar and overall quality are actually slowly declining. Even though technology is getting better and there are things about our lives that are more convenient. Things like our health and stuff like that. The important stuff. That's all declining. 
Yeah, it is a situation where people have nothing left to lose. Though, in contrast, a lot of history has been erased. Our generation doesn't have a concept of how easy things were for people in the 60s. A lot of people in our generation think they have it made. Hey, in the hunt housing I live in where the walls are paper thin and nothing really works right, I feel like I have it made because I look out my window and at any given time there's a guy pushing a shopping cart underneath it. And it's like, God, what if I lost this? I'd lose my little planter with my herbs and place for my cat and that might just be enough that people are holding on to that they'll be afraid to lose even that. But then that's going to be taken away from them at some point anyway. But you can't explain class conflict to people. It has to be experienced. I didn't get it, even though I had been reading Marx and I had been reading Lenin and reading anarchist texts like your Potkin and Bakunin. I didn't get it until I was tear gassed by the police for standing at a protest and it became real. It has to become real. You can't explain to some wage worker, you're, uh, you're getting screwed and you, what you think is great isn't great and everyone had it much better before you. And you just, it doesn't happen. You have to be tear gassed. You have to be beaten by a cop. You have to have your landlord evict you and realize you have absolutely no recourse. You have to experience it before you have that Aha moment you have to be thrown in jail subject. for selling drugs illicitly because it was the only thing that you could do. Yeah, and in order in order to be receptive to it, the, the the gamer dudes who are happy working their eight hours and coming home and playing their game for four hours and yelling at their girlfriend to stop bothering them and then passing out on the couch. You know what? They'll they'll do that under socialism too. They're they're useless and they won't. They won't get involved and they don't need to be worried about. Yeah, the funniest thing is, it's like they're the ones that complain about the most about it, but they're going to just do the same thing. And pretty much as, as long as they're not abusive people or anything like that, like, we'll let them be because they're not, if they're not harming anybody and that's what they want to do, is then more power to you. If that's what you want to do when you get home from work, is play video games for four hours and that fulfills your life fine do it i i have no problem with that and i think most people are like that but i think for the most part most people actually do want to do more with their lives yeah you know they do so there's a part there's a part of me <laughs> i guess it's an angry old conservative man part that's been translated to a leftist part where instead of thinking oh you should work for your employer and be useful I feel like the privileged dudes who just get to play video games all day should like go out and help their neighborhood and participate in what's going to become a collective shared economy. So the ironic thing is, you know, under capitalism, the people who do that are not a drain on the economy at all because the capitalists are the drain on the economy and everyone's stealing all the money. But under socialism, where it, it, you're relying on people to work for the good of their neighborhood and be participating in it and establish themselves within that participatory economy. Well, then someone who just farts and eats Doritos all day is kind of a useless schmo and should do something with his life. Well, there'll be social pressure against those kind of people anyway. So there would be like some untraining that's going to happen naturally for a lot of these people. And it will be a little bit of a wake up call. But the other thing is, it's like things won't be in the situation where people will slump into that. Like they won't grow up in that kind of culture. They'll grow up in a different culture where they'll understand that participating in society is this honor and it's good to do it. And you're going to feel good about yourself if you do this. Yeah, and it's not going to be exploitive. You know, people dread going to work because they know it's a bullshit deal. They're getting paid no money. They're being paid no money to exhaust themselves for someone they've never met who's going to use that money to figure out how to make their life worse and more expensive. The work that's going to be done also isn't going to be so sorry. I, I read this anarchist pamphlet from the table that I was at because I just can't, took all of their pamphlets. And it was really, really insightful. It was called The Phenomenon of Bullshit Jobs. 
it, it was talking about how, how how Keynes had predicted that we'd only work 15 hours a day. And we are pretty much only really doing 15 hours a day of real work, but we're sticking around for a whole 40. But at that 40, we're doing work that doesn't really need to be done. It, it's unproductive labor. And, and capitalism, it, it's an unexpected development for it because it's supposed to eliminate labor that isn't profitable, not pay a bunch of people to sit around and do work that doesn't actually need to be done. There's a and sadistic actually... element to all of this as well, because it's not just about the profit. You have to get everybody engaged in this culture, uh, which is naturally sadistic to justify all of this. Because if you why? can't get people into the mindset, so that's why like every cashier that you see has to absolutely all the time stand up on their feet. Anybody that you work retail, that person working in retail, probably in a lot of pain if they're older because after about 20 years of doing that, it hurts to be on your feet. It, you know, like you, it hurts to walk around all day. A lot of those people are in a lot of pain. Uh, even with relatively like we you think were simple jobs, that over the years just kind of multiplies and adds on. Yeah, I mean, I can see it when I check out of the grocery store with the older cashiers. They just are. Uh, they got the wrist braces on and and all yeah, that. Yeah, you know, they're like they're barely standing there. And that was the point that the article or the the pamphlet went in is that it, it's done to construct a culture that supports the values of the owners of capital and even though they don't <laughs> represent them themselves because they're always on a boat or half asleep on their mansion or whatever they don't do any work at all it's pretty clear that after the revolution all that labor is going to be unnecessary and we're going to need people out on boats breaking plastic out of the water and people reforesting and replanting trees and rebuilding bridges and this work that's actually going to have an impact even under capitalism even though it was still capitalism you, you would be hard pressed to find someone who worked a new deal program who felt like their work was a waste of time because they were building their towns they were their future supply. they, they were building phones. the world for their children to live in who exactly. would ironically vote to destroy everything that they ever <laughs> built. God. Which I have to wonder. I wonder if they think about that and they look at like the silent generation. Do they look at their kids? Do they feel ashamed? Because I've, I've never actually asked somebody. Like I've, I've always had the opportunity to, but I never wanted to do it because I feel like it's just such a cruel thing. But I have to wonder... Is there like some shame that these people like that did grow up during the Great Depression, during World War II, that they have because their kids destroyed everything that they built? They basically well, gave them the world. It's like if a kid that gets a great Christmas present and he throws it across his room and says, oh, it's broke. <laughs> I mean, there were still Republicans, right? The, they the weren't as bad as they were. Now, like in the twenties, they were, but not Coolidge not so much in the thirties and forties. Uh, well, that's because they were politically neutered. Roosevelt achieved total power over the political system, and that ideology was enforced. But there were still there were still the Archie Bunkers of the world. Those people were still in plentiful supply. I'm sure that there are a lot of new deal true believers every time i run into them they just seem disgusted with how the world is now uh, what few of them are left most of them are great people uh by yeah. the way, when i get a chance to speak to them i uh, when i worked at, at uh the credit union i'm not gonna say which one uh, i actually had a uh, an older gentleman who fought nazis kind of like he's kind of like sussed me out and figured out that i was a red He'd ask me, hey, you wouldn't by chance happen to be one of those goddamn commies, would you? And I, said, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to confirm or deny that, sir. And he's like, well, I want you to do me a favor. If you're ever at one of those protests, I want you to give, uh, I want you to punch them as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, yes, Colonel, I will do that. <laughs> 
Yes, Colonel. <laughs> But yeah, that was that was actually one of the most interesting things that uh, ever happened at that job. It was kind of funny because at first I thought I was going to get an earful. As far as the, the neo-Nazis go, I, I mean, it could be much worse. I mean, they could be running the country like they are in the Ukraine. And by the way, I am going to say and prefix this because Attica was insistent that I do it, uh, is this story does come out of Russia today absolutely keep that in mind but i think the story is legit basically ukraine has a neo-nazi problem which shouldn't be a big surprise but it's a big disappointment i'm gonna preface your prefacing and saying that i don't think that the reporting isn't legit it's just sort of the spider-man meme where they're both pointing at each other with russia calling ukraine a fascist you know it's sort of the pot calling the kettle black and russia is a a mafia oligarchy you know, it, it just seems kind of silly. It basic propaganda to justify a war, a proxy war that they're running in that country, where the, the troops that they have fighting the Nazis, fight, fighting the Ukrainian fascists, aren't that much different. They're not fighting for anything but their own nation's bourgeois interests. They're not fighting for any kind of liberation. So it just seems kind of silly to me that uh, you know, it, it's it's the pot calling the kettle black. Not that their reporting isn't accurate or, or honorable. Just seems kind of silly. Well, Russia has interests in the Ukraine, so it shouldn't be surprising. It's really easy to kind of see where this is coming from because this is an attempt by Russia to vilify the current Ukrainian government, which... To be fair, they have every right to do so, but like you said, it is a Spider-Man meme where they're kind of pointing to each other and calling each other fascists when they're both the fascist. And so it, it's, it's ridiculous, but it's easy to see what they're setting up for. And it's not like if the Russians go in there, I don't think they're going to be the liberators or anything like that. It'll just be, hey, uh, we're Russian now, same old deal might be a little bit better uh, but I don't see it's going to be a vast improvement and it may be a little bit of an improvement for the Russians living in the eastern part of the Ukraine which I could guess I could understand maybe if they wanted to partition off and become part of Russia that that would be justifiable but Russia's intervention into Ukraine definitely is right now a form of imperialism with how they're carrying it out because they're not doing it to protect Russians in the area. They're doing it to secure resources and interests like uh, warm water ports. And even if they were doing it to protect Russians in the area, that's just ethno-nationalist bullshit. That's the justification for the invasion of the Czech Republic and Poland and everything, so... Right. Uh, like, well, the difference is, is, to be fair, the Ukrainian government is trying to go after those people. True. Because they don't want them to exist. They see them as kind of like the holdover of their Soviet communist enemies and all of that mythology that they got going on. So, when the government of Ukraine was torn down when they stormed the palace with literally <laughs> the, the Mosins. What was what were the politics of the people rebelling? Were they fascists attacking or, or were they liberals or were they communists so that didn't got the, uh, over? The Ukrainians, if I recall correctly, were white Russians as well. That's who they kind of fell towards like during the original revolution. A lot of that particular part of the country was oh, what they I, called I mean, right. I mean, white like Russia. in 2011. I think oh. it was 2011. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I got you. When, when they most recently deposed the the Russian aligned president and they just stormed the president's. My uh, understanding was is that guy was pretty much a political moderate. Uh, he wasn't like one way or the other too much. I think he may have been a little bit left of center where America would have wanted him to be. And he was pro-Russia. Because a lot of the, the pro-Russians are actually communists. How can you be pro-Putin and be a communist? Like, there's nothing leftist about him. 
well because he's the only person there that is protecting your interest and you have to kowtow to him to get the money to fight your war and what's really going on okay. is it's a civil war in the ukraine so even with russia out of the picture they still have an internal conflict going on and yeah. they still have the nazi problem going on and it's getting ridiculous because they're like the neo-nazis right now like they're just beginning like their big month plus like cell like weeks long celebration of the uh, Galician division and all of that which was basically the uh, far right SS unit for the Ukraine <laughs> they're the people that hunted down the Poles and the Jews in the Ukraine so where is the the left in Ukraine basically what's going on here is a good portion of the eastern part of the country is Russian speaking a lot of them have more left leaning political sensibilities there are uh, like a band of the country that goes around the country that is a little bit further to the left anyway so they got support all over the country along this band of which part of that's like Crimea as well and then up but, towards the north you have the the more right wingers they they mostly speak Ukrainian they're nationalists they want to be like their own great nation they don't want to be part of Russia the two mini republics Donetsk and Luhansk they at the beginning did have somewhat of a communist rebellion but it it's been purged from their governments their governments are just the russian state system they're just yeah, running. right now it's it's pretty co-opted on their side unfortunately it's it's still there and it's something that we should critically support i don't think we should support russia so much as we should critically support those people in, in that area but we can't critically support them because we have we, we would be supporting Russia at the same time. Russia is the source of their arms, their money, their income. If we supported their victory, if we, we support uh, Rojava, uh, even though Rojava is taking U.S. money and arms, then aren't we just supporting America? I mean, I I kind of see a little bit of that argument in there. So that's why I say like critically and heavily critically. We need to realize, like, there. Unfortunately, in this particular situation, there's no good guy, and some concession has to be made from now. Right now, it looks like the biggest danger in that country to people living in that country isn't actually Russia; it's the Ukraine. It's their own True. government that R Russia has a mafia government that assassinates political opponents, but they don't go and ethnically cleanse their population. Well, unless you're in Chechnya, which is a totally different story. True. Uh, then in that case, yeah, there was some of that there. Uh, there's a lot of things about Russia I, I don't like with Putin and with that. But I don't think in this particular case, this is one necessarily that I come hard down on, 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 on the side of like anti-Putin in this particular case. Because given two evils here, and the lesser of the two being Putin, I think that that really goes to show how bad the Ukraine situation is. The fact that nobody is reporting this is also kind of odd too. Like this is not something like you're gonna see in uh, any mainstream news. The only sources I could get from it were basically Russian sources or local Ukrainian sources in Ukrainian, which I don't speak. So not a lot of people are talking about it and it's a big threat. Ukraine is located somewhere where if they were to have a fascist uprising like that and were to install a government of that persuasion, they border on a lot of other significant countries like Poland or whatever, and they could really destabilize that nation for a lot of people. So not only are they a threat to the Ukrainians living there and political dis dissidents, they're a threat to the Polish, uh, they're a threat to like the Baltic speaking people and Romania, the Balkans. There's a lot there in that area that could be destabilized. So on the other hand though, 
Ukraine is breadbasket. It produces a ton of food and historically has been Russia's farmland. And it's the area that Russia is running a proxy war in that historically is the part of the food. they've always had an interesting relationship with Russia as well. For a long part of their history, they were essentially Russian. In fact, it used to be called Little Russia uh, by a lot of different uh, places. So there was historically this connection with Russia. So this idea of a totally independent Ukraine is not necessarily one that really history supports. And if you want to get into accusations about nationalism, you could easily accuse the Ukrainians of doing the same exact thing that we're accusing the Russians of in this particular case. There's really not much of a good leftist argument either way, because at one point, it, it, in some stances, we are all for liberation. But I don't think that that liberation should come at the cost of independence, but uh, you're going to have fascists in charge. That's not good. Right, and nationalist independence has never been a leftist concept anyway. The idea of, of a nation is inherently colla class collaboratory. It, it, it even, it bothers me today, you know, the nationalist rhetoric out of the Soviet Union with, you know, the Russian motherland and whatever, like it was never even about, it's about the liberation of the global working class. It's not about a national liberation of borders from one political system to install another political system that is just to organize your own bourgeois. It's about liberating the working class from control of a national bourgeoisie that by its definition is supposed to dissolve those borders that are supposed to only be there because the bourgeois have an interest in having them there because it divides up their money from other bourgeois money. Well, so, you know, even the Soviet Union didn't do a good job with it separating nationalist rhetoric and making it about liberation of the working class instead of, you know, liberation of countries. Uh, the whole ICE situation, uh, where, that's, this is actually a good story. People actually disrupted an ICE company picnic in North Carolina because they were tired of the uh, raids in their communities. They got sick of it and basically what happened was is around april 14th or so there were huge raids all over western north carolina they kidnapped about 20 people or so uh in the roundup and a few days later ice had their company picnic and 60 to 70 protesters show up at the company picnic and then 200 showed up at the federal building to protest them uh later on yeah you know and it's amazing how no one got arrested like <laughs> And like I said, the police just ran away. Like they don't have their guns, they don't have their tanks, they'll run away from like people shouting at them. P police are the ultimate paper tigers. Yeah, well, if they aren't able to defend themselves, what can they do but run away? I mean, that's that was the only tactical option that they had. But it goes to show that if we keep doing this, if we keep showing them, no, this is not acceptable, eventually it's going to become too hard for them or they're going to say that it's too dangerous and they'll eventually have to stop i mean because they can't just right, and their definition of danger is having too many people yelling at them i see it as a positive trend it's something i'd like to see more of you know we need in this country people to stand up to law enforcement and that includes ice whenever they're doing something wrong and regardless if it's deporting them because like you said earlier you know, hey, the nations, they're, they're only there to protect the, the class interest. But yeah, so like, if the police can't even have a fucking picnic, that's a pretty good, uh, good sign. It's a good, it's a good indication things are swinging the right direction. But a few last things I did want to go over uh, that were important, that did kind of make the news this week. Right-wing news outlets are using the hashtag hands off our kids to promote pulling their kids out of sex ed which is probably the only time these people actually ever pull out with as many kids as some of these people have had and spreading lies about sex ed that it's this lgbt plot to make your kids gay 
how is this even getting news? Like, this is such an old bushier thing, right? Conservative parents getting angry about sex ed in schools. Like, you know what I learned in sex ed? I learned to use fucking Cool Whip as fucking loop. That's what I learned in sex ed. I didn't learn any gay uh, conspiracy. What school did you go to that taught you to use Cool Whip as loop? <laughs> I went to a school that was infiltrated by Saddleback Church. What? You were told this by Christians? They were like, yeah, you, you totally use this as lube. Jeez, what did they, <laughs> do they not know about how to it do the sex? Fucking, it was in a fucking video. <laughs> also, also, someone was fucking sponsoring this video because we watched the fucking because it was it was like a one week thing in health class, right? The actual sex ed class, and someone was fucking like, we watched a whole video on how healthy Starbucks muffins were for you. Oh, you you know what? So joke. you, when I was in like seventh grade or something like that, we for a few days had an abstinence only sex ed class. And during the middle of that, cause it lasted like, like a week or something like that in biology and science. After about the third day, there was a scandal involving somebody in the school administration that actually procured the program. And it turned out like he was like sleeping with everybody. And like everybody there were, in the school faculty? No, no, that he was having like multiple affairs. <laughs> so <laughs> they had to get rid of him. And he was like this big, like, you can't teach the kids about the sex because they'll do the <laughs> sex. You know, I mean, Donnie Darko is the only thing you got to watch to get the, the mentality of those people, you know, where the church guy with his with his videos and his lifeline thing turns out he have made his money selling child porn or like the in in real life like the the preacher that touches the kids it always takes that turn too it's it's always these people that are like hardcore about this that are they turn out to be these creeps and so i don't know what it is do they just assume that everybody does this when they learn about sex so they're afraid that their degeneracy is gonna spread or what because like it would seem like no, to me, it gives them it gives them a cover no one would suspect he's fucking everyone in the neighborhood because he hates sex he's a good christian like, i'm not gay but i'm going to <laughs> <laughs> that's all you have just, just stop at yelling i'm not gay that's all you have to do yeah exactly <laughs> gay people are going to hell so i'm not gay i'm a christian <laughs> those people so people are are assaulting women in restrooms to yeah. defend the west uh the, the the western culture oh yeah no i saw that well this is where this goes though so you have this idea right that gets ingrained in the people because the whole reason that they were doing this in this like with the schools they were pulling out their kids was because of the lgbt issue they were thinking like this is liberals trying to brainwash your kids into thinking you know that benjamin is now sally you know that kind of thing and that they're going to be corrupted by satan and and everything and so what this really translates out to in the real world is people getting assaulted in bathrooms whenever they see a transgender person because they get triggered and angry by it Paul Joseph Watson here. To I'm not you triggered. About the liberals. I'm not triggered, and I'm not a snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a conservative man, a white man of the proud white to race. Too. Like he's starting to wear uh, cardigans with his graying hair. <laughs> it's starting to. His age is really starting to show. He's getting to like the gray point. I thought he was like younger. I didn't realize he was that old. <laughs> he's got he's like gotta be entering his forties. I thought I thought Paul Joseph Watson was in most early thirties. I didn't think he was that old. No, he's a lonely incel who thirsts for uh, Alex Jones. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, give it to me, Daddy Alex. 
And now Alex is like, oh yeah, yeah. I got something coming up on the next show. <laughs> I can't even finish the joke. <laughs> Speaking of him, he's being sued. Yes, again. he is again. Under now, like div five, six, seven. I don't know. It's it's. At, I think it's at least three times now that he's had a uh, a legal incident that's ongoing. But this is uh, with the whole Sandy Hook issue. And basically what's going on is who would have thunk it? Apparently defamation is against the law. And you can't just go around saying that people were crisis actors and were making the shooting up. No, you can't do that. Who would have thought? How wealthy do you think Alex Jones really is? I'm I'm worth a lot of money, okay? Don't doubt my money. I'm a man. Do you think he's wealthy enough, not wealthy enough, not to have to pay for it? I'm angry. Because you know, there's two. They, you know, everyone is capable of going to prison. Martin Shkreli went to prison, but he didn't go to prison until he played with the money of rich people. He right. So for here's, killing a bunch of here's the victims. thing about that. So defamation is not a criminal suit. Now. There's a possibility he could go to prison for this, but it's a very small possibility. More than likely, he's just going to get fined. The government's going to take some assets and he's going to be done with it. And he's going to complain, I lost my network because they censored me. And all his right wing radical audience are going to donate money and buy water filters and buy my coffee that's grown by communists in Mexico. But I, I don't tell you that part because, uh, because, um, um, uh, oh, look, it's, uh, it's, uh, Paul Joseph Watson. <laughs> hey, cover me. <laughs> Coming up with some conspiracy about how it's really leftist. Exactly. Well, he's, he's, he's going to do that. <laughs> but it's, it doesn't surprise me at all. And I don't think it's going to result in a conviction where he goes to jail it will be he's gonna pay a fine and like i said all his listeners are just going to give him money and then it'll be a done deal but in the in the meantime uh it's just it's it's gonna be him dragged in and out of court so it'll be an interesting show and we're probably gonna get to hear a lot of alex Jones meltdowns followed by him backtracking on his show and giving crocodile tear apologies on air the well, it's a shame, but at least it'll waste some of his time. I, one thing I did want to go out on, though, because uh, I thought it was awesome to leave you guys with, there is a video of GM employees in South Korea destroying their CEO's office uh, when they realized they were going to be laid off. So definitely check out the notes. Check out that video. I think you guys are going to love it. Would be nice if we saw more stuff like that here in America, wouldn't it? Hey, you're being laid off. We're taking your benefits, whatever. We're giving you a pay cut so that we can get that second bass boat in there. Well, you know what? You got to fight the power. Yeah, no, people just think, uh, oh, why did I do something wrong? Oh, my boss is every right because he owns me and I'm a slave. Remember, fight the power and good night and good luck.